the pandemic, uh, the impact of the pandemic on me and them is uh, probably one of the worst times of our lives. You can imagine on an autistic child who wants to run around and have free space and have his therapy swinging, trampoline, and even though we have those in our home, we don't have the social impact, we don't have family around. Um, Lumen's allergic to over 40 foods, and so just trying to find the foods that he wanted um, and that were available because everyone was panic buying was the stress of all stresses. And then thinking we can actually go outside when this is a child who spends three hours outside every day, at least, just for walks, that's not counting school. Um, horrible like I can't I think I've subconsciously tried to erase it because it was so horrible um I've shared this story and it's not a nice sh story to share but he um was crying and crying and crying so dysregulated that we were going to bed at some ungodly hour waking up at some ungodly hour it was dark um for a spell of about two or three weeks we just had darkness because it was winter time and uh, he was his sleep schedule was so disturbed. Um, yeah, we were just completely dysregulated, both of us, because he was, I was, like he said, we're sort of one entity. Um, so he was crying for hours and hours and the neighbors called the cops and the police came around and it was totally unexpected to me. And it was a, on a particular night where we had maybe two hours of sleep. They came in and I was shocked and, um, I think I just felt like the world's worst mom, that I couldn't help my autistic child to survive something that other people seemed to be surviving. And it just felt like, how could you fail something that should be relatively easy? He's safe, he's at home, he's eating. Um, so anyway, the cops were very understanding and they said, we'll help you, we'll do what we can to help you. And so they, they did. I called Kelly <laughs> for my first instinct. It's surreal when I think about it, because normally you would call your parents or you would call you know, your partner or something. I called Kelly and told her what happened. I called Elise and just said, is there anything you can do to help us? Because you've helped us in the past with regulating him and getting him into a sort of routine. And because you've been there so far, um, can you just do something more for us? I didn't even know what I was asking for and Kelly just said yes We're gonna do heartbeat hellos every day We're gonna help you and then she was amazing She sent me some flowers and a really nice note and just made me feel Not just a theater director to to you know mother whose son is participating in the flute, but mother to mother um, you're doing absolutely everything you can and you're doing a brilliant job and this is not a failing, uh, is what she said and um, pretty much saved us because I can, you know, say now I was suicidal. It was horrible, horrible. Sorry. Uh, no, it was horrible and it did, uh, flute did every day, did hellos. And I think I looked forward to them just as much as Lumen, and uh, <laughs> we still do them when he's really dysregulated. We still do them, and he knows, even in the car on the way here, we do them you know, to get him ready, and um, he understands it. I think he knows it as maybe this isn't just for me, Mom, this is for you as well, and I get that, and now it's sort of my turn to, <laughs> to regulate you. You know, it is a symbiotic relationship. We're not existing in a vacuum together. We're together all the time. And um, it, it's made us stronger. I mean, we're here. We're here today. We're here at Flute. And it's definitely made us stronger. And now, you know, if something happens and we have another pandemic, I think we'll be better. We'll be better off for it. The direct changes I've witnessed with Lumen are monumental. I mean, he's a different human being. If you, if you looked at recordings of him, of him from his first session to now, um, it's amazing. He trusts people more. He trusts the actors more. He knows. He has an intuition about if somebody is there for him. So he knows these actors. He's known them for years now. He knows they're there for him, and he knows um, he can be himself around them. And his behavior, because of this, is much more calm. 
uh, much more receptive to whatever they want to teach. Um, his speech has obviously changed. I mean, um, you know, he said hello for the first time, uh, which is above and beyond. I mean, for somebody who's nonverbal to say something uh, that he's been hearing and hearing and hearing. But, to, you know, I think we take for granted all, you know, the mental energy involved and all the physical energy involved to say those words and to say them in a way, uh, in context, and in a way that made him so happy. Because if you've seen the video of him saying it, he shocked himself and was happy. And uh, for him to know, I've done something uh, because I've been taught to do it and because I enjoy doing it and I'm giving it back to you, it's just gonna get better. I mean, that was the beginning, I think. This, with flu, who knows how many years we have left uh, participating with them, but I, f I do feel like it's the beginning. Hello, oh. Hello, oh. Hello, oh. Hello, oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh.